Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about some new drumsticks that I'm offering for the end of 2022, right before Christmas. I'm really excited uh, to show you what I have. I've been doing a lot of R&D on some new woods and different sizes. Uh, I've been selling these now for, you know, uh, at least 12 years. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from people, and obviously, as any business does, I've made lots of changes to make it easier for me to make the sticks as well as meet the demands of a lot of my customers. So we'll be talking about that today as well as maintenance of the sticks because I always get lots of questions. I've already done several videos on the sticks and a little bit about maintenance. We'll talk about that more today. So I'll be using a regular snare drum today. This is a Ludwig concert snare. I'll be using um, a quiet tone drum mute, the classic. This one is from the 1980s. Henry Adler invented these in the 60s. And I'll also be using an old Ludwig Ensemble practice pad, which uses the tambourine slash practice pad head, which is great for trying out sticks because you can really hear the pitch. So let's start with that. Let's start with the pitch of the sticks. Um, I do test all my sticks, like I've said in the other videos. I pitch test them on a piece of metal as well as the pad. Now it's important, like I always say, to use the same hand when you're doing this. So. All right, because if you're using a different hand, your hands are going to sound different. It's just the way we're built. Uh, there's no one I've ever met, uh, all the great teachers I studied with, whose hands sound exactly the same. Of course, that was always Joe Morello's dream to do that. Um, we would talk about it, but uh, he, he was not able to do that as well. But he came as close as anyone that I know to getting his hands to sound perfectly the same but it's just not going to happen for most people so don't worry about that but when you pitch text test sticks make sure you're using the same hand all right the other thing you want to do you can roll them like that to make sure they're not warped a warped stick is is going to feel really weird so it's pretty rare these days because most people know well enough to dry their wood so uh this particular pad here like i said it's a uh, very small 10 inch I believe maybe eight inch uh, practice pad head and it's extremely tight so once again great for trying out sticks so I'll be using both of these today so some of the new offerings that I have first of all before we get to the real fun stuff are the thicker sticks that I'm making now a lot of you asked for a thicker shaft originally I was just making more of a, uh, a thinner shaft like a drum set stick shaft but so many people ask me for something thicker so these are just above 5 8 and by the way these are persimmon uh, i have a very large supply of persimmon i was lucky enough to to uh procure that several years ago it's all dry now and i've been making and selling lots of sticks from this and these tips are reverse tips they've become extremely popular and they're great for rolls uh, Just make rolling so easy and also it's a very balanced tip the reverse tips are something now that i really believe in at first it was an experiment and i've sold so many and people are so happy with them i'm just making a lot so really the only tips i'm offering right now are the barrel tip which looks like this and as you know if you've watched my other videos i'm a huge fan of the barrel tip i think it's got a great combination of articulation and being able to do clean rolls So it's a really fine tip. And I make this tip uh, in basically two sizes, large and small. Now I have started making a really small tip or a smaller tip, as you see here. This is a good uh, tip if you play a lot of orchestral snare drum for articulation. Not as good for a lot of rolling. So it's not an all round stick but it's a special stick for playing pianissimo and very articulate things like four stroke roughs.
but you will find it a little more difficult to play closed buzz rolls with. Those tips that I mentioned, the barrel and the reverse tip are available in all the woods that I use. Now, a lot of questions on the woods I'm using. It really depends on what I have available. Uh, it's, it's getting harder and harder to get some of these woods. A lot of the woods now are on the endangered species list, so I do not buy woods like that new. Uh, I have a stock of very old woods. Most of my woods I have are from 20 to uh, 30 years old that I have. Uh, I was fortunate enough when I was younger to buy just a huge stock load of old uh, kind of exotic woods and I'm working through that now. Most of it's extremely dry. Uh, I've recently started using some different woods. We'll talk about that in a minute. But certain woods like the zebra wood, heartwood that I had for a while, that's all sold out. For some reason those seven or eight big planks I bought about 10 years ago were just incredible. So those of you who have those zebra wood sticks, congratulations, <laughs> because I'm, I probably won't be able to ever get that again. And it's extremely hard wood to work with. So uh, in, in this respect, as far as getting drumsticks that match. All right. And that, of course, is the trick to get all these exotic woods to match, because it's not like oak or uh, uh, sorry, uh, hickory or maple. Well, you could use oak. It's not too bad. But the most common woods that you use for sticks are hickory and maple because they're very, very consistent. If you get some good white hickory, and that's what you want, the white stuff, uh, you can make sticks all day and they'll be the exact same weight and they'll be the same pitch and everything. Persimmon is the same way. It's incredibly consistent. The problem is the range of weight only goes from like 65 to 72. That's it, because there barely is persimmon heartwood, which is the center of the tree. All these other woods I use have a lot of heartwood, so you can get a really heavy stick. So my lighter sticks normally are made from persimmon and then sapwood of some of these other woods, like black wenge, sometimes tiger wood, leopard wood, and pecan, which I've started using, which I really like as well. I have a large supply of that. That's from my own backyard, and that's drying, and I'm uh, continuing to make sticks from that. So let's talk about the new woods that I'm using, which I'm really excited about. Uh, the, the, the most exciting wood here are these Cocobolo rosewood sticks. So I managed to get um, a large amount of Cocobolo from someone. It is the most beautiful wood you will ever see. It's just incredible. You can see the figuring on this. It's just beautiful. So the range of colors on this on these woods, uh, or this cocobolo wood, it's kind of like rainbow colors. It goes anywhere from yellows to reds to browns. The sapwood is kind of yellow, but most all of this I have is heartwood, so it's heavy. So this is a heavy stick, but the range is going to be from 65 grams all the way up to 90 grams, if you ever want to use a stick that heavy. I, I can't use a stick that heavy, but I do use 80 gram sticks to warm up. So this, this particular pair is 80 grams. They're heavy and they are dense. So it's a type of rosewood and they sound beautiful. And these are all matched perfectly pitch wise. Now it's a hard wood to get to match pitch wise because of all the different um, hardnesses within one piece of wood. You'll get all kinds of stuff going on there, but that's why it's so beautiful. So there is a lot of waste that goes into this. I have to show you guys this kind of owl eye here. Beautiful. It's hard for me to actually sell these after I make them because they're so great. I just want to keep them all, but I've used up all my wood allowance buying this wood, so uh, so I have to sell them. Uh, so these will be available for a limited time. After that, uh, unless I can get some old stuff, which is highly unlikely, I will not be making Cocobolo sticks. They will be expensive, though. Uh, right now, I'm selling them for $100 a pair. I just heard, you know, some jaws drop and things drop on the floor. But uh, yeah, that's the, it's, the wood is unbelievably expensive, and, and then to make them and finish them and all that stuff. So I'm actually uh, not a lot of margin on that to run a business. But I just think they're so special and no one else is doing it. No one's crazy enough to do it. 
So, uh, so I just want to do it just for the hell of it. And then I'll run out of it eventually. It is uh, a strange wood to work with because it's poisonous. It's sort of like the wood version of poison ivy. So if you uh, ingest it, mask list, you'll get a reaction. You can sensitize yourself to it. And then you get really, really, really sick. Uh, I experienced that the first time. I, even I had a mask on, but it wasn't good enough. And I, I was, had a lot of problems. And I have asthma anyway, so that <laughs> that was a bad thing. So now I have a whole kind of hazmat situation when I deal with this stuff. It's got a lot of oil, but once you seal it up uh, with the finish, like all these are, there's no issue at all because it's sealed up. But making it raw can be dangerous. So for those of you who want to try it at home, if you do, please make sure you wear a mask. And if it touches your skin, it can get really ugly, like poison ivy or poison oak. All right. Uh, the other thing I'm offering now are marching band sticks. Uh, I got so many uh, requests for these. Uh, and to do this, I have to make a bigger dowel. Uh, normally, my dowels start at about three quarters. But then I have to, to make these, I have to start with a one inch dowel. So they're nice and smooth when I work on the lathe. So this is a pair of leopard wood uh, marching band sticks. They're, they're heavy. They're 90 grams. And these are too thick for me, but a lot of you out there, you like this kind of stick. So I started making them. Uh, and there'll be a limited number of these available because leopard wood for me is becoming scarce as well. And I'll be out of that probably within a year or two. Um, but uh, this makes a really nice marching stick. And we're going to talk about uh, maintenance here now because it's important on these kind of wide grain woods like leopard wood. I'll show you the tip here that you maintain the stick. It's not like oak or uh, persimmon or pecan, where it's a very tight grain wood. This, these grains are interwoven, so they can tear out when you're working with them. But more importantly, if you're playing on a head that's coated or a mesh head, uh, that you can destroy that tip really easily because, again, the grains are wide. Same thing with black wingy. And this is only a problem on tips like barrel tips. It's not really a problem on these reverse tips, just so you know. But any kind of tip, even a teardrop tip, I kind of stopped making those out of the exotic woods because sometimes they would just fall apart. And, uh, you know, I think the barrel tip is superior anyway, as is the reverse tip. So it's just my opinion. But I will still make it special order uh, for you if that's what you want. Uh, so the way you need to maintain these, and with every, every pair of sticks that I sell, I include a sheet. But uh, they're finished. These have six coats of a really heavy polyurethane mixed with beeswax for a good grip on there but you know it wears out because you're basically hitting a drum and it's going to wear out pretty quick so if you play a lot with them what you want to do is dip them in a flooring polyurethane all right which is really tough stuff you just buy a little can of it it'll last you forever and just clamp it and dip them in there and just let it dry or you can use a foam brush and paint it and just do that it takes literally a minute and then let it dry overnight and your sticks will last forever i have leopard wood sticks okay that are probably like the first sticks that I made almost 20 years ago. It's way before I was selling them. And I still use them all the time. In fact, all those Nard videos, if you watch those Nard videos, that pair of sticks is that pair of sticks. That's 20 year old pair of sticks. And I just treat them every six months or so, and they're gonna last forever. And it's a great feeling pair of sticks, but you got to do that on the wide grain woods. So on these woods, uh, they would be leopard wood, black wenge. I don't know about the coco bolo yet uh, because it's not, it's an oily wood, but it's not a wide grain wood. It's pretty tight, so it shouldn't be a problem, but you should do it anyway. You don't have to worry about it on persimmon. It'll just wear down over time, just become smaller and smaller. Or a pecan, same thing. Those woods are closer to the American, North American hardwood family like maple, oak, and hickory. So uh, although oak will do that same thing, that's why people don't make a lot of sticks out of oak. They'll shred too. So what the other thing you want to do is when you play them on snare drum, and I talked about this in another video, you want to take a piece of sandpaper. This is 400 grit sandpaper. You see it's well used here. And you want to just go over that uh, spot, those spots that are rough. So, And then you take a microfiber cloth and just wipe it off. 
and it's smooth and it won't do damage to your sticks. Now the Remo Renaissance heads and some of the Evans heads don't have that kind of coating just for that reason. They won't tear up your sticks. But if you're going to play a lot of brushes, you'll still get brush contact sound. It just won't be that spray coated rough stuff. The mesh heads, I wouldn't play on a mesh head anyway. God, they hurt my hands. But uh, if you have to do that, don't use my sticks because, uh, well, don't use my, the exotic woods. You can use the pecan, you can use the um, persimmon, and you can use maybe tiger wood, which is an exotic wood, but it's a little bit tighter grain. No guarantees there. But don't use anything else on there. You're going to have problems. It's going to tear your sticks up. Also, I don't know how all of you play. Some people play really hard when they play. And so, which is fine. You play how you play. But I use a lot of rebound when I play. So the stick is always bouncing and I'm not playing into the head. When you play into the head, that stick is going to wear out quicker. All right. So it really depends how hard you play, uh, maybe how big you are, how much... Uh, weight you're putting on that stick how fast they're going to wear out but again if you treat them like this you're you're protecting them so they're not gonna wear out like that all right uh so i think that covers everything uh these coca bowl sticks here are sold already i wanted to make this video before i sent them out uh they're gonna sell out fast they always do uh because it's kind of a limited time uh thing here for these woods and this wood it's i'm going to keep probably a dozen pair for myself for the time being uh just because i don't know i just want to have them just in case i can't find any more uh but i would i would suggest if you want them you probably get them you know within the next six months or so because they will disappear and once again they're available in the reverse tip here and i'll make them i make them sometimes thin so this is like basically um a little a bit less than five eighths and I will make them thicker a little more than five eighths. So, you know, we're not talking about too much here, but nothing like a half inch, nothing that skinny. And then once again, just to remind you, I am making a thicker stick now, uh, especially in the reverse tips. I feel like it gives a lot of balance. These persimmon are a little bit uh, above five eighths and that, which is my normal thickness, a little bit maybe above or below, but these are, you know, a little more so you can put them like I sit there and I'll put them through a little uh, diameter tool that I have and by the way when I when I you know when I'm doing R&D for these woods I have to make different tools to make these tips I grind my own tools that's the way I do it so every wood you got to kind of change the way you're working the tools that you're using because all the woods react differently and got to sharpen all the time certain tools don't lend themselves well to sharpening over and over and over again. So, uh, but I finally do have these Cocobello sticks down now. I know I was talking about it to people for a long time, but it's done now. And I did make, um, I think I probably have maybe a dozen pairs made and some I'm gonna keep myself. These are sold, but I will be making more in the next month or so. So I uh, hope that answers all your questions. If I forgot anything, maybe I'll put it in the description. All right, so, uh, We'll see you next time. I'll just play a little on both these pads. And these are the Cocobello 80-gram sticks.